So when you're in GTA Online, you hit um, the first thing that's going to come across is uh, how to create your character and what the look of your character is going to be. So you can spend some time with this because once you make your character, that's the character you're going to have forever. You can create a second character if you want, but uh, you can and you can transfer all of the uh, stats from your first character to your second character. And I believe you can uh, delete a character. So anyway, you can go through this and you make up the character the way you like it. And once you're happy with it, you can finish and start the few missions that are mandatory. Uh, you get one from uh, Lamar, and uh, there's a few, two or three, that are mandatory. Um, do the um, introduction, the description that they offer, so you can get some more information from them. And then you're out into the open world and free roam. Once you're out in the open world and free roam, it gets to be very interesting as, you know, you're going to have to deal with other players that want to kill you, psychopaths that like to stalk you and kill you over and over. So you're going to have to learn how to deal with that. Otherwise, uh, it's, it can be done in a co-op manner where you're playing with other players to accomplish missions, or you can go player versus player. So I hope this has helped a little bit. Okay, on the PC, this is hitting Escape, and then Online, and then Players, and it lists all the players that are in your session. You can leave the session and go to another session. You can click on the players and send them a friend invite, or you can ask to, them to be kicked from the server for hacking. And over here, you can see what their kill-death ratio is, what each of their um, statistics are. Stamina. Uh, strength comes from punching other people out. Shooting shooting skills are going to increase your reload time, I think, and your damage that you can do and whatnot. So it's helpful to have uh, better shooting skills. So if you get into police shootouts, you know, get your three-star rating and just end up shooting a lot of police, not blowing them up with uh, C4, sticky bombs, or grenades or anything like that, just shooting, you'll increase this shooting score. Stealth, creeping around flying. Okay, the next important thing you're going to want to do is you're going to you're going to want to make a character first off, but you know, after you get past that and you do the first couple mandatory missions, you're going to want to get a car. Now, you're going to get the opportunity to steal a car and have a Simeon pay for all the upgrades. If you're careful and you go look around for cars, you can get uh, what you want off the street, but you can't get any supercars. You won't be allowed to steal a, you know, high-end car and keep it for yourself. So you're going to go online here, as I showed. You're going to get your cell phone out and go to um, travel. And you can go to Benny's, and you're looking at the stats here. The um, top speed, acceleration, braking, and traction. So these are just a few cars that are available for your purchase online. Now you're not going to be able to buy any car on off, you know, the internet here. You're not going to be able to purchase a car unless you have a garage. So you're going to have to buy a, an apartment or a garage that'll hold cars. So I'm just showing you some of the cars that you can get, and what you're looking at is the um, statistics compared to each other. So I'm going to look at the two doors. I'm just going to compare all the different two doors. So mostly what I'm looking for is speed, acceleration, and traction, because most of the time you're going to be rushing around to get someplace or trying to lose the cops. It's going to be in, in the city, and it's block-to-block -block acceleration. If you're on the freeway, top speed might be an issue, but it's not going to really be that big of a deal. And here we're going to see that motorcycles, even though they're extremely fast, when you look at the specifications, top speed and acceleration, it's not any better than the cars. A $35,000 car and a $16,000 motorcycle are pretty even, except the braking is much better on the bike. If you want an exotic car, you got to go to Legendary Sports. And here you can look at the supercars. And here's a $2.5 million car, the Tyrus. And you look at the acceleration and traction and top speed, and they're all better than the $30,000 car, but not that much. So now let's go to the gun store. The gun store looks like this in the regular game, but in the online, only the board to the right has any guns on it. So when you click E to purchase something, only the right selection is available. 
all these guns start to fill in as you do more missions and you advance. So the mini submachine gun is a must buy because it's what you can use while driving. It pretty much is the same as the regular campaign. If you're going to be driving the car, you can use a sawed-off shot or a mini shotgun, or the or the sticky bombs or the, the submachine gun, and you need a submachine gun. But the next thing you're going to want to do is get a main shooter, a shooting gun that you're comfortable with. If you're used to something in the main campaign, that's probably a good pick. I'm showing the stats so that you can see them and compare. But the main uh, shooter that I like is the special carbine because it has a 100 round coil magazine. That's the one that I'm showing right here. 100 round coil magazine. It's a pretty good gun. So you can see I have the drum magazine and the scope. And these things only become available later as you get more um, experience points. I don't like the combat PDW. It's got a built-in silencer and a f slow rate of fire, and it didn't seem like it did very well for me. The bullpup is a pretty good weapon. You can get a 60-round magazine with it, and you can get a scope. And all the scope does is when you press the zoom wheel on your mouse, or whatever you use to zoom your um, scope in with, it about doubles the size of everything. Once the assault shotgun becomes available, it appears to be the shotgun of choice. Stay safe. I'm in passive mode here, so I can't bring any guns up. I, but the advantage to being in passive mode is nobody can come over and kill me while I'm just daydreaming. So this is the combat PDW. You can tell it's pretty quiet, and uh, nobody's calling the police. This is the bullpup, and you can tell. It's not Special carbine. This is a short run. It's red. You have to be really close to do any damage here. You can't shoot it from a motorcycle. Here we're going to show the rocket launcher. It locks onto your target. When it turns red, it should go and get a kill with it. Of course, it doesn't always do that, as you'll see here. And when it's not locking to anything, you can get a target. You just have to eyeball down the tube and just guess where it's going to go. And just eyeball down the tube, guess where it's going to go, and pull the trigger. So now I'm going to show you how to play missions on your own or start jobs and host them. You go to jobs, play job, and then rockstar created, and then missions. And in here you'll find all the missions that are available to play. And you look at the right side over on the side where it says players and if it's one through anything you can play it by yourself because you can play as one so you pick your mission and then you click on it and it says do you want to do it yes I want to do it and then the next thing that comes up will it'll load and then it says either it's available to play where somebody else is hosting it or you can be the host after the mission is over you'll get a loading screen and it'll go through the loading screen and then it'll drop you into the world in the world, any of your players that just finished the job with you can be ruthless enough to kill you, and then all of your money will drop out, and they can collect it. And if you've won $10,000 or $15,000 or $100,000, they can just take it. So what you want to do is you want to go into passive mode immediately. Then bring up your phone and go down to the world down below there. Click on it. Go to Money and Services. Go to Maze Bank. Go to Your Account. Main Menu. Deposit and you'll have the money from your mission that you just made in there. Put the maximum amount in your account, yes, and then after that, if somebody shoots you, they can't take any of your money. And your money will be available to purchase anything you want in-game, so you don't need to carry the money around with you. Then you bring your phone up, and you can look for the jobs, and go start another job, or do something else. So there's uh, a few stores in on GTA 5 Online. You just look on the map and you can find them. And you go into the store and then you can purchase food and snacks. And the food and snacks gives you health. So if you hit the button and go into your inventory, you can pick the food and snacks and up your health. So on PC, you hit M and you bring up this window, which allows you to go to your inventory. So here I'm regenerating my health going into the inventory and picking snacks and then go into whatever I have in here and I'm going to take some of it. Okay, in this I'm showing how overpowered the Karuma is, the armored Karuma. 
and I'm just going in here and if you look at my green bar it's hardly going down at all in fact I don't think it does go down at all I'm gonna be killing like 15 guys in here without suffering any damage I don't have to hide behind cover to shoot at them just from inside the car I'm protected and you can have passengers come with you and they can also shoot so you can have four passengers in this car Okay, sometimes they'll spawn you in the middle of nowhere, and you don't know why. Why are you spawning up on Mount Chiliad, where it's going to take five minutes to go anywhere? So you look at the options and the last spawn location, and it, you can set where you want to be spawned. In the beginning, maybe it has random automatically set, but after you get a house, you can spawn at your house. Next, you can go into the interactive menu and go to vehicles and request a personal vehicle, and it'll respawn your car right next to you. And then you want vehicle access to be restricted to just passengers, otherwise somebody can jump in your car and drive off in it and leave you stranded. And lastly, you can go to your phone and call Moore's Insurance to replace your car if it gets blown up or somebody else destroys it or the police destroy it. The other thing I'm going to suggest you do is that you go on YouTube and you watch the different heist missions that are available in, in the GTA 5 Online because the instructions are horrible and they're not going to tell you what to do. There's a Pacific Standard Job, the Prison Break, and Humane Labs. And if you look and watch somebody else completing them, you can get an idea of the job that each of the parties has to do because it's not all, everybody's all together. Most of the time, they have individual jobs they have to do. And if you don't know where to go and what to do, then you fail over and over again.